In 2011, I was really privileged to be able to go to the southern bays of Greenland with researchers from Geus, the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland. Very few people have ever been to these bays and they're really remote, special places. Far to the south of Tasselak lie the southern fjords of Greenland. A series of huge bays and long fjords through which some of the largest glaciers in Greenland drain directly into the sea. Scientists from Geus, the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland, arrived in Tasselak to begin a field campaign. The objective of the expedition was to collect sediment cores from the two large uncharted bays in the southern coast. The trip was led by Dr. Camilla Andresen. Her project links sediments with ice sheet response and glacial retreat in Greenland with the aim of unravelling what has happened in the past. The first detailed maps of Greenland were made at the start of the 20th century. So as part of the expedition, the team took the opportunity to gather accurate bathymetry data along the way. At the start of the expedition, as we left Tasselak, we ran right into thick sea ice, stretching as far as the eye could see. Our captain, Siggy Pettersen, found small leads through the sea ice and barged larger ice flows out of the way. Ice conditions were unusually bad for this time of year and progress was really slow. But finally, we fought our way free of the ice and got underway to the southern bays. The coastline of Greenland is very varied. There are massive bays full of islands and ice. In places, deep glacial fjords incise the coast. Elsewhere, the coast is made of rugged and forbidding sea cliffs. The entire coast is characterised by its icy and inhospitable nature. Eventually, the boat made it to Ikativak, a large bay with several marine terminating glaciers which have active iceberg carving fronts. The bay was choked full of glacial ice, which formed a thick blanket over the sea. This dense, cold ice caused mist to form. Close to the shore, the ice was tightly packed, making sampling very challenging, and it was decided to head further offshore. Ekotivak is vast and is surrounded by really low-lying land. So often, in the middle of the bay, we'd find ourselves completely surrounded by iceberg cliffs. We spent two days sampling in Ikertivak, making the most of the excellent weather. Sediment coring is a tool for paleoglaciologists. Marine sediment cores were collected using a rumor corer. Using the information from the cores, they can understand how the glaciers have behaved in the past and what controls them. Sediment slowly accumulates on the seafloor over time. It comes from two main sources. Meltwater plumes flow from beneath the glaciers, delivering huge amounts of fine sediment to the surrounding area. Further offshore, sediment is primarily delivered by debris melting out from icebergs and raining onto the sea floor. In fact, some icebergs are so rich in debris that they appear like rocky outcrops. Far from the coast, variations in sediment accumulation rate are controlled by the amount of icebergs 
and so it is possible to work out how active the glaciers have been in the past. Drinking water began to run a little low, so Siggy guided the boat up to a flow of sea ice and hopped on to collect some fresh water from the melt pools on the surface. This water is extremely pure. With replenished water supplies, they set off for their next destination, Koga Bay, a little further down the coast. The bays were similar. However, Koga Bay had less glacial ice but there were huge sheets of winter sea ice remaining. Koga Bay is surrounded by the Greenlander ice sheet. In some places the rocky shoreline is visible, with the Greenland ice sheet not reaching the water. And there are a few ice-free islands in the bay. Koga Bay was surreal. We were really, really lucky. We got some excellent calls and the weather was perfect. One evening, as the sun began to set behind the vast ice sheet in the distance, a spectacular full moon rose on the other side. On the return journey, thick fog started rolling in from the cold sea currents just off the coast. Siggy's years of experience along this coast proved invaluable. He took the boat close to the shore where the fog was thinnest and the boat progressed rapidly northwards towards Tasselak. The field trip was really successful. The weather was amazing throughout and that allowed us to get loads of great sediment cores. But it was also really good to meet and work with Camilla and the other members of the Gaius team. For me, it was an amazing experience. It was a great chance to get down to the remote and unexplored southern bays and see a completely different aspect of Greenland's stunning landscape.